As new types of therapeutics enter the market, they may require a drug carrier in order to deliver them to the cell or organ of interest. Now I want you to think of this like you're trying to package a very fragile object. In order to make sure that that object stays safe, you package it safely inside of a box. Now that packaging material and that box can be thought of as the drug carrier delivering that very sensitive and fragile object, which may be the new therapeutic. And one way that we can deliver these sensitive drugs is through viral vectors. So the viral vector is used as a drug delivery system. And the first thing that's done is the virus genetic material is actually removed. Then it can be modified to take out parts that allow it to replicate inside of one's body and take out parts that allow it to make proteins that may make you sick. It can then have those genes replaced with genes that allow it to fight off a certain type of cancer, or maybe with genes that allow it to make a protein that can now be used as a vaccine. That genetic material can then be repackaged back inside of the viral shell and then administered to a patient. That virus will then deliver that modified genetic material to the cell of interest, and then that genetic material will be read and allow it to do what it was programmed to do, whether that's fighting off a cancer, being used as a vaccine, or maybe even being used in gene therapy. However, certain types of viral vectors are used for particular cases. We can think of short-term viral vectors like ones used in a vaccine. These may be adenovirus or even pox viruses that are used. But if we want a certain type of virus that could be used as cell and gene therapy, we may want to use a virus that can actually integrate that genome into the body. And that would be a lentivirus for a long-term solution. So as more information about different types of carriers comes out, we'll be sure to keep you all informed about the latest and greatest drug technologies.